video game bang, video game bang, video game bang. Mega brand. Live from the sack, it's the live, it's in fact. I'm putting rhymes on this track to put my guys on the map. Cause they giving you the latest on everything on your playlist. This bet the safest from basements to greatness. Updates, geek news, tech talk, and reviews. They can summarize it so you ain't gotta breeze through. Listen once and you're forever fans. And I'm not saying it because their theme song features Mega Ram. Might think you fly, but ain't nice as my guys. Got eyes on the prize, so like and subscribe. <laughs> we back in the booth. I think that they gon' eat this up. The ultimate source of all geek media. Other podcasts, they just don't match up. Need proof? You can check the archives and catch up. Stats off the chain. We have rearranged the game. It'll never be the same. Now it's time to feel the bang. bang. What is up, Man. my pizzas? Corey Vincent here, video game Bang is back in business. 2021 has come, and so is the gaming news, everybody. Man, we can't go a day without something happening. And I cannot wait to talk about every single juicy little detail you might have missed throughout the week with my crack team of panel uh joining us first uh actually he's gonna get the first star treatment this time never before has he been announced first but today we're changing it kyle the winner what is up man how you been what's up guys how's it going usually I'm, I'm you're like slowly the... working my way up the ranks here dude yeah I'm like... you know i figured you, you've been good i'll give you a little treat i i, I hit <laughs> <laughs> it's responsible yeah you've, you've been you've been, you've been holding it out we've been playing grinding some overwatch together uh in some of the best trash overwatch i've played in a oh, long yeah. time that's the only way to play now I'm i can't i can't play serious anymore like you can only be that line just above actively throwing yeah that's the fun zone right there that's my new account that's the whole purpose of it it's to go in there and not care about winning so my newest thing uh when i play is i go into the lobby and and i QDPS, of course, because why would you play anything else for fun? <laughs> and then you say, what do I play in open chat? And then the first name, well, I don't care whether it's the other team or whoever, the first character they throw out, I insta-lock that character, and that's how I play. And whether we win or lose, I'm having fun. That's the way to do it, man. That's why I don't introduce you first. Did you hear that pause right yep. there? There's oh, never I didn't a pause. I thought you were we're, about to move on. We're talking man. here. No, man. I'm not the host. See, this I is what happens this. under under pressure. Didn't you listen to it's anything a, David Bowie musical. said? It was a rest. It was a rest. It was a it was a, it was a half bar rest. All right, we breathed. It was like a we six bar rest. rest. It was a six, okay, it's a six bar rest. There's like I, a. I thought my I thought my feet froze. I was like, oh shit! And you took my connection. It was the moment on. of of thought and 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 uh, allowing the the listener to kind of absorb all that we just said and talk about hey, shit, i haven't played overwatch in a while maybe i want to go play overwatch and have Corey possibly throw in my games i don't know people think that when i choose the order of who i introduce it's totally random it's actually by design i gave you the mm -hmm. ball and there was yep. a clear lane and you missed the layup oh i dropped it yeah, yeah. he never drops layups not one time he don't miss that's what the kids say on twitter skip and tosh what you doing man how you been Oh, just not missing. You know me. Not missing. <laughs> just like he's got a king shirt on. That's why he doesn't miss. That's King's Guard. <laughs> totally different. Totally different <laughs> franchises there. Yeah, winners. <laughs> winners. Oh yeah. What's going on with the Sacramento Kings, man? Why? Why? How could we go this many years without a contender? What's happening, man? Um, I mean, what's happened over the years? You know, it's kind of its own thing. What's going on with them right now? Right I now, I can tell you, it's just it's just two words. Please. Luke Walton. <laughs> <laughs> he he got to go. He got to go, man. That's they, it. They should have known better to bring a Laker over to us to let them be in charge of stuff. Like he's still he was and that Laker. He was from that same time period that we got the bad blood with. You think he really yeah. got his heart in it? I think he's actually still on the Lakers payroll. And they're still just screwing with us. Sabotage. Hey, I'm not disagreeing with you. All I know is uh, Vlade gone, who yeah. hired him. Okay. And now he got to go. Another and Laker. You know, 
Why are we trusting these well, Lakers? Hey, front office uh, full of traitors. There's a right. There's one more Laker, but I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Can you dig it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. But hi, VGB. Nice to be back. 2021. Here we go. Let's get it. I know we missed you so much on the last episode. Glad to have you back. But speaking of glad to have him back, another video game bang. I oh, see. Last week we brought you Jade Arena. You know, out the out out of the archives of video game bang history. This Damn. one we're taking it back even further with. One of the cornerstones of the program, returning back from Mexico, David Webb. How you been, man? Hola, como esta? <laughs> don't even, please don't. Yeah, yeah. We don't need a lawsuit. It's <laughs> no, we don't. It's 2021, <laughs> man. You can't get away with that anymore. Oh, man. How was Mexico, on, man? How was Mexico? Give us life updates. Take us uh, from you know your last show to, to this point. What have you been doing? Uh, last show, I think, was like, what, uh, March 2020? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a different oh, time. Those yeah, few times you showed time. up, it was CGI. I... It was CGI. Yeah. It was a uh, laser, kind of like what they do with Tupac. And uh, <laughs> they, uh, yeah, no, it's been uh, it's been crazy. Uh, got married last year. Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last year was uh, a lot of uh, – I was working at Bass. So I got I had a lot of stuff there that amped up a lot, and then uh, planning a wedding during a pandemic is a non easy task. Yeah, uh, I can assure you. <laughs> so that was crazy. Uh, yeah, and then uh, just got back from Mexico, uh, went there uh, for seven days, and uh, I I was looking up flights to go back while I was in the airport, <laughs> waiting for my flight to come home. So was, what uh, what was it like going to Mexico amid a pandemic? Bro, there, it's like it's super clean. Like you see people. Like I know here, people say that they sanitize, and I'm sure they do. I'm not. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm sure they do. But there, you see it. They're sanitizing all the time. The whole if you have time to lean, you have time to clean. That happened there. Like there was, <laughs> no one was leaning. Everyone was cleaning, and then it was sanitizing. And uh, any any time we went into any sort of building, whether it was a shop, whether it was a restaurant, whatever, um, even if it was even a building, even if it was just like a patio area, they would take your temperature and then hand you hand sanitizer. Dang. Uh, yeah. So basically and what they, you're saying is Mexico has their shit together better than we do. I mean, I'm not going to say that, but... You uh, could say it. It's, we all Mexico know. Has their, Mexico has their shit together. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. Cabo has their shit together. Cause, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like talking to some of the people there and, and they were saying that they closed for like five months ish. Okay. Give or take. And I, so like the whole economy there just like took a dive because that's like tourism all is like the number do, yeah. that's all what they do. So now that they're able to reopen, they're like, We're taking this shit seriously. Yeah. Like masks were required. Like they'd be like, No, you can't come in without a mask. Like here they say like you can't go to the grocery store without a mask, but they're not going to stop. You. That's they're my most. Gonna, that's my going. biggest pet peeve. They have people at the door watching, and then I yeah. just watch people go through. They will, just like, through. Will All you milly. can do is suggest here. You're like, hey, can you please? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Have a great that's, day. You can't do shit. Like it's just you can't. No. In Mexico, they're like, nah. You need a mask. We have one if you need one, but you can't come in. We uh, the, our first stop. From the airport, on our way to their hotel, we stopped at Costco, which I didn't know they had Costco in Mexico. <laughs> and they were limiting the number of people that could go in because it was me, uh, Marissa, and uh, our family friend that lives there, like part time. And uh, the three of us were to go in and like, oh, no, only only two people per per card. Crazy. So I was waiting in the parking lot. But um, but yeah, no, it's it's crazy. It's super nice there. Super clean. Like I wasn't concerned at all uh super safe on the airplane too like we watched this video um we flew united so i don't know what the other airlines are like but we flew united and and they had this whole video on how because of all the stuff that they do they did a test a uh with the dod and it's like a 0.03 percent chance of catching it on one of their flights there you go so well we're glad to have united. you back you, you know where else uh has extremely good uh testing is uh wandavision 
Sorry, that was a terrible transition. I, don't that know was, where I, was I just got, you know, how do you go from Mexico to one? <laughs> I don't Sorry, guys. That, so that transition sounded like something Kyle would have done in the, in the first part. Yeah, oh I know. Kyle would have done. No. Well, like, we would have said that with like Oblivion. And <laughs> then like, I got sad again because yeah, I was like, oh, well, Oblivion. Yeah, poor Oblivion. Rest in peace. Uh, so WandaVision is uh, the first thing we got up here because we talked about it a little bit last week, but I, you heard what I had to say about it. You heard what Kyle the Winner had to say, but we have not heard what our comic connoisseur, the kingpin of comic paraphernalia, Skippintosh, has to say about WandaVision. So please, the floor is yours, sir. Well, I mean, I'll, I won't bloviate. Uh, on this, but I'll quickly speak about it because the biggest thing is issue episode three came out today. Yeah, I, I hope we were all able to catch. If not, that's fine. But biggest thing, I mean, I was looking forward to this more than I was looking forward to Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I was really, 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 really looking forward to uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I am one of those kids that grew up with Nick at Night, so the Mary Tyler Moore show, Dick Van Dyke show, Bewitched, um, you know, Brady Bunch, like all of those shows, like I grew up with, I Love Lucy, of course, but uh, Bewitched and the Mary Tyler Moore show were some of my favorites, that and Mork and Mindy, so nanu, nanu. I was like, what? Nanu Nanu. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it didn't disappoint, yo. I mean, it straight felt just like one of those shows to me personally. I was in love with the show. Uh, it was great. All of the beats. They made the jokes fit within, you know, the motif of each show as they were kind of moving through and kind of melding them all together. I was curious whether or not it would translate for some people that maybe didn't grow up with all of that stuff, like my daughters, because I watched it with both of them. One of them has seen some of those shows and, and kind of enjoyed it. The other one didn't. They both really loved it and were just cracking up. Like the jokes were translating for them. And for me, you know, obviously a little bit of that nostalgic feeling mixed with the fact that like I understand a lot of the references and the Easter eggs that they had. The production value was perfect. Um, I really enjoy um geez how am i forgetting my man's name bettany the uh paul bettany thank yeah. you yeah the, the voice of uh the voice of jarvis um as well as uh the voice and the body of uh vision and um i actually <laughs> og back in the day there was an iron man app and you could download like all like the these little jarvis prompts and then you can put them as ringtones and like yep. the different textos on your phone. Yep. Web web knows. Web oh, I knows. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I never changed them. That's still my ringtone. Like if I, oh, I keep my phone on vibrate, I keep my phone on vibrate. But if I ever take it off, like here he comes. He Hello, sir. You, you have an incoming <laughs> call. You have a call waiting. Would you like me to answer? <laughs> so yeah, man, I just loved everything about it. I mean, off rip. Um, What's her name? Uh, the the Olsen. Liz Olsen. She's my favorite Olsen now. <laughs> she's she's bypassed you know the other two by a long shot. Forget now. Mary Kate. Yep. It's all about Elizabeth now. I ain't worried about Mary Kate and Ashley, yo. They can go somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Have a Coke and a smile. You know what I mean? <laughs> Liz is holding down the Olsen crown right now. So overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, I know some people said that it felt, felt like it was dragging a little bit and I know that there's a big stigma or a lot of what people are used to Marvel being um, from, you know, and I don't even think just that, because if you think about the Marvel movies, the MCU movies, we went everywhere from espionage movies to heist movies to fantasy. You know, we really did go all around. We, we went spectacle. I think with the pace of the last two movies being so big and grand, I think there, there is probably an expectation for some big, serious action. But I like that they're taking their time with it. It's not a movie. This is a show. We've got, we spent a lot more time with the characters. So I was happy with the pacing and them kind of establishing the motifs, but issue number, or excuse me, episode number three, I'm happy that we started to get a little bit more progress with it and started to kind of see a little bit more of where things were going. I kind of already knew just from some of the symbolism I had seen in the show, like, I'm like, oh, I know, I know that that sword, I know the sword symbol yeah. from mm -hmm. reading the books and everything. Yeah. But um, but it, but you know, I know for the people, I could have honestly, I could have lived in the world of the first two episodes. They could have done a whole damn season like that. And yeah, that was like, that, that yeah. was the most interesting part. I like they they 
pivoted pretty hard. I did not expect mm-hmm. that, but that was an interesting. Well, that that yeah, was, what was I really like good. is that there's like the the Bewitched series and stuff of the Black and White Age were quite different from like when you start getting into the colored series like uh, mm-hmm. Brady Bunches and yeah. you know those mm-hmm. those different strokes and, they, and stuff. They, and yeah. they, they reflected that in the different, like right. even from the camera angles, the Technicolor, the 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 music mainly, like just the variance of the theme song from episode to episode is something I look forward to each time because it's been unique yeah. and different. They did the yeah. whole animated version, you know, the first time, which was a thing back then, and then they the mm-hmm. one with Bettany riding the bike down the street was so <laughs> like that was beautiful. My favorite Easter egg though, because I was a Brady Bunch kid, I watched the Nick at Nights all the time. Oh yeah, and my favorites were the Brady. Brady Bunch, different strokes, like th- those are my two like go tos. But the Brady Bunch had a big Easter egg when Bettany was playing with Kitty Carryall. It was just uh, Cindy Brady's yeah. like go to doll. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. That, that was right. that was straight up. And I, and I, and I, when I saw, I forgot that that was in my brain. That was one of those things. <laughs> and when I saw her, I went, "That's Kitty Carryall." And my my wife's like, "What? Did you have one or what? something? How did you know? That? <laughs> How did I know that?" <laughs> I was like, "No, man. I just was really into the Brady Bunch, and that was just floating around up there for some damn reason." But no, yeah, you're right. This show is fantastic, David Webb. What's your take so far on it? Uh. Pretty much the same. I, I too, grew up Nick at Night, and uh, I think my favorites were Brady Bunch, uh, Bewitched, uh, Dream, I Dream of Genie. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I really liked, uh, especially the second episode really had a, uh, a, a uh, Bewitched vibe with that entry. The yeah. whole mm-hmm. beginning was, was straight up Bewitched. But even, even in the first episode... Just the whole, she's using her magic to do housework, and that was very like a bewitch kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I too liked uh, that they weren't necessarily jumping right into it. Um, yeah. But that being said, I am glad that episode three we got a bit more substance. You know what I mean? Like there's something, like, yeah. there's more going on. They're like, pushing us, yeah. They're pushing the story forward more they're in your face. It. Exactly. Like yeah. episode two, I really liked how all of a sudden, like, where'd that helicopter come from? And oh, it's color mm-hmm. seeping in and stuff like that. And then you had like the radio scene where you had, like, you know, who's doing this to you and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, up until the beekeeper scene, I was really like, I was kind of curious on what, which way they're going with it. Mm-hmm. And after the beekeeper scene, I was like, this feels very, and you guys may have talked about this already, but this feels very House of M. This is oh for the sure cinem- the MCU's version of House of M because like you know their their take on stuff is different. Like Civil War, there's a comic book that's series that Civil War, and they took like bits and pieces from it. It's the same gist of it, but they changed things. I think this is their way of doing House of M, especially yeah. after the third one with uh, Geraldine. So yeah. where, how far are they going to take this? Because we know Marvel has X Men back, so they could pretty much dive and dive and dip into anything from there. Is there a big end of season reveal or major tie that you want to see skip? Do you anticipate Magneto or some references to a property we haven't gotten to see uh, played with by Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yeah, they're gonna go over to that. I mean, just them. With the twins alone, they're starting to get over in, into that area. Um, Wiccan and what was it Wiccan and Speed? I think are their names. But um, and they were really big parts of of uh, of House of M and whatnot. So they're going over into that route. Uh, I don't think they're, we're going to get some references, but I know the X Men are are far off, and this will be a piece to build towards them. But um, overall, Webb hit the nail on the head. Big House of M vibes. Um, another one is uh, a series just called Vision that uh, mm-hmm. Tom King Tom King had done, uh, and that was like a big part of it. And that was a really interesting series, and a lot of like the odd tension and the like something. It's things are too perfect to be right. Like they pull that directly out of that book too. So it's going to be leading to it, but ultimately it's kind of already. I don't want to say it's been spoiled, but we know that this is leading towards. Um, the uh, Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness. So 
that that's I, I'm I'm excited for what we already know is going to happen because uh, I just want to see it unfold in front of my little comic book loving eyes. <laughs> I am I am curious, Corey. You mentioned like you know if this is going to feed in the, the X Men or or mutant stuff like that. I, I'm curious on how they would do that because they they've already established Wanda as an an enhanced person, not a a mutant, and so they would have to try and do some retcon i think or establish that there's like enhanced and then there's mutants yeah i'm waiting for them to drop the m word once we get yeah. the once we get that m word and uh unless they've done it already which i don't think they have think that'll they be have. Uh, that'll be a, a very very that, that'll that be as big for me as when they said avengers assemble finally <laughs> in like the oh, in God, the movies man, <laughs> yeah when yeah, i hear I, the, I think when i hear the word mutant I, goosebumps Goosebumps. I don't think it's it's nothing's ever gonna come to uh the first X Men the uh, first uh Iron Man uh post credit scene with Nick Fury and he's like I'm putting together like wait something the Avengers initiative and I just remember yeah. as a kid because I was a kid then like we were all oh, kids yeah, at that was... point. Oh we were like we were, what? Man, dude. <laughs> Yeah, we were man. Yeah. Uh, I think the I was gonna say the one thing that I find interesting is how I guess the three of you are all pretty big like comic book heads, and I am not. Like I know a little bit of the Marvel world from like Ultimate Alliance, uh, and beyond that, like just the movies and stuff. And so it's always interesting. Like you guys, first off, know where this is going because, like, I mean, it's like The Simpsons. Like most of it has already been written, already been you know <laughs> figured out elsewhere. But like also the fact that like. It, I don't know. It's one of those things like with this show in particular, I have, I mean, it's always cool to see where it goes, but like, I have no external expectations or like no, um, preconceived notions about where the show is going to go. And also like, it's one of those things. I think they did a good enough job of leaving. Like it's weird because it's a, it's kind of a, there's like a meta and then a, or like a, I guess, yeah, meta. And then what of the opposite of that is the immediate. And those are two very different things of like, do you care about like the individual jokes and like the character development of the two people and like the world that they're in, or do you care about like the outside thing? And like, I'm totally content. Like if they didn't take the show anywhere, it was just, what is it like to have two former Avengers living a suburban <laughs> life? Like, I don't, I don't know. Happy. Just, <laughs> if, yeah. Like legit, if they kept that, if they just stayed there, I, a lot of people would probably be pissed. I wouldn't. Uh, try to, it's on TLC. Yeah, dude, like, I'd be fine yeah. with that. I mean, I'm fine with them having kind of a more what what else is, uh, you know, there's something behind all of this. There's something bigger afoot. Like, I do like that. And I think a lot of people are now kind of, that's their expectation for shows. Like, that. No, you can't just have something not mean more than what it is. I felt the in, same in way when I started watching Westworld. I felt like I could have watched yes, the premise exactly. of, of Westworld forever and they didn't have to do all the external stuff. And in fact, I think the external stuff is what made me not watch it anymore. Like yep. they, I think they could yeah. have spent way kind more time. Yep. Maybe give me three more episodes of just more world building and connective tissue before you started getting flipping it upside down. And one last thing, whoever edits this deserves an Emmy because I think like this gives such a like a unique opportunity for like an editor to do art and like to do more than just like control the pacing of the show. Cause like, I think in particular, like there was this weird, like back cut. I'm like, what the hell was that? But like, it was entirely <laughs> intentional. And yes. I'm like, Oh, and like, cause it, it gets you to like have this feeling of uncomfortability and like, Oh, there's something weird that feel like maybe feel weird. I don't like that, but like, that's all very planned. And then, with the weird aspect ratio change, freaked me out because I don't think I've ever seen that. In oh yeah, <laughs> where you go, boop, boop, like what the hell is going on? <laughs> so, it's such like a unique take, and I think we're starting to like explore that world a bit more of like what the heck can we do with editing a show now? I'm glad you said that because that is also something that that was really cool and how they stuck to the individual styles of the shows that they were doing because they did the they did a a like reversal in episode two that was very of that time period where it was mm. like a straight rewind you know what i mean and like they had like how it was all kind of staticky and stuff like that and then once it's in color and like technology has advanced at this point then it's just uh they just like chopped it and then cut oh, and it was actually, very like similar that's a good i liked out. how they did 
they changed the different styles of it depending on the kind of show that they were doing. It's super cool. Yeah, this is definitely one to watch. Uh, I don't know if it's $25 million per episode uh, quite budgeting <laughs> yet. Uh, there was some Probably chatter not. in the in the VGB Discord about this one. Uh, people were doubting that it costed that much, which I would agree. I could see it's hard to believe that it costs this much with, you know, some of the practical effects and some of the stuff, but whatever. We're, beyond that, we're definitely getting our uh, money's worth as far as the Disney Plus goes, and uh, only more amazing stuff to come uh, with Loki and you know the Winter Soldier show. With uh, you know, so we're, we got it. We got a lot to do, so we will definitely be covering this uh, in 2021. But we got to get to some video game news, everybody. So we're gonna start with the news of the hour. Uh, this was dropped this morning. Uh, caused a lot of outrage, uh, a lot, and I want to feel for them, but again, console gamers, man, you just sign up for this. When you buy the console, you are at the mercy of that company. If they want to do something stupid like this, you got to eat shit and grin because Microsoft has boosted the price of their basic Xbox Live Gold membership, sparking outrage across the internet. Uh, basically, Microsoft is raising the price of the subscription of Xbox Live Gold, its premium gaming platform, doubling the cost for an annual pass, and uh, basically went from $60. Back in my day, when I worked at GameStop, it was $59.99, get you a year of gold. And even yep. then, everyone would flip out, like, well, PlayStation 3 is free. And then you'd go, oh, well, you know, Xbox is premium. How many times have you been hacked? How many emails have you gotten from PlayStation saying, you know, your data has been stolen by some hacker? Well, uh, you know, the price stayed the same for many, many years. Over 10 years, I believe it's probably been 60 bucks. But now Xbox has decided not wasn't enough. And it's $120 for a year just to play with your buddies. That's all you get. This is not Games Pass. This is not getting a bunch of free games, as have, have we've talked about you know, in the past. This is uh, just bare minimum. I want to play a game with my buddy. They're doubling the price. David Webb, uh, you, are, you, you built a PC. You've been PC game, but I know mm -hmm. in more recent years, uh, in your you know, married, very laid-back lifestyle, you've moved back to the console. So yeah. how does this affect you? Are you going to pay this crazy premium or is this going to drive you back to PC? Well, I have I have a Game Pass Ultimate. So I that price I don't think is, is changing. No, it's staying the so same. That's, that's staying the same. So this one really doesn't affect me uh, personally. Uh, you know, like you said, if you're playing console, this is what you have to expect. We talked about this and, you know, before the show started how with the pc you just get on hey you want to play a game yeah let's play a game like you just play a game with your friends you don't have to worry about all this nonsense i mean i i'm kind of you know like you said spend the same price forever so i'm not super surprised that they upped the price i am surprised at the timing of it you know the article that that this is coming from over on bloomberg was talking about how a lot of people are surprised that they're doing it in the middle of a pandemic when more and more people are home more and more people are are on you know on the screen time and more and more people have lost income and they're jacking the price up of, of something like this. I'm also kind of amazed that they're doing it in the midst of a console launch when there is no way that anybody is getting a new console anytime <laughs> soon. And they're like, yeah, we realize that you're upset about these consoles, but we're going to go ahead and jack the price up of the service. Like it just seems kind of poor timing. That's a great, point like of all the times you want to make your platform more attractive to people when you're competing with playstation and you know there's tons of untapped so many people out there still trying to get the xbox who are probably like yeah. Ooh, actually i don't know about that one anymore and even if they would have gotten ultimate just hearing this news puts a bad exactly. stigma in your head yeah uh, cause what if that what's keeping them? There's absolutely not one thing keeping them from doing this to games pass next month. Right. They, oh, double, 100%. they could double the price of that. Uh, Kyle, what do you think in, uh, you know, more of a, uh, PC gamer yourself? How does this news hit you? Uh, dude, I, it, it still astounds me that people have to pay. Like, cause I think that like the problem is, is you go to buy a console with the pretenses like, okay, I'm going to not spend that much money. Like it's literally twice the cost to build a PC. 
at a you know like a, a pretty good computer that compared to like buying a console and so you're like okay well i'm saving money here but then you think about it okay over a five-year span if you're spending what 120 dollars a year annual yep yeah well there goes any money that you had previously saved and you still have to pay for internet too it's not like you don't have to <laughs> pay for you know comcast or at&t or whatever you have to pay for internet and then you have to pay to use the internet to play a game that blows my <laughs> mind <laughs> like it, it's like how is it worth it anymore like i'm starting to like i don't know i i think that i i still see the value in a a console for like a single player game like playing a, a last of us or an uncharted or spider-man like those are great because they're they do well on controller. They feel better on controller. Um, you know, third person platformers just work better on a controller. Um, but like, it just doesn't seem worth it anymore at this point, if you're having to pay so much. Um, and I think like the only reason that Xbox is not getting decimated in the market is because they have the game pass. It seems like to be the only redeeming quality for an otherwise, okay, their console is, not as good they have not nowhere near as good of exclusives and um it's either significantly worse for uh, to save money or it's about the same and you pay more it's just that they have constantly been doing weird things with their consoles every single year meanwhile ps has been just like straight down the middle like okay we're doing this we're steadily changing every year or every you know iteration um but man, like it just—it feels really bad. Like it, it just. Please come over to the, come over to the, free yourself from the shackles of Microsoft. <laughs> spoken and like play a, on a Windows computer. <laughs> spoken like a true master racer. Skip, what are you thinking, man? How do you feel? Because I know you have not stepped foot in this next next generation yet. You're planning on winning your console from the NBA 2K League. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but how do you think this plays into the grand scheme of, of the video game industry? I mean, you guys pretty much covered it. I don't think it bodes well. I think it's a little bit of a slap in the face, you know, to, to Microsoft's customers and their market. This is also one of the reasons why I don't mess with Microsoft, bro. To be honest <laughs> with you, like, I'm not really a Microsoft type person. Um, I use pages. I don't use Word. If I got to send it to someone who got Word, you know what I mean? I export, export. it as a Word That's doc. On them, yeah. so. Not going to look as good because Word is whack, but Word has been around a long time. I get it. But um, I mean, overall, uh, like there's there's no way that their board got together and spoke with each other and convinced themselves unanimously that they were going to come out looking like the good guy for making this decision. It's just it's just asinine to me. But I mean, again, for the people that mess with Microsoft, you know, I'm, I feel for y'all. This is kind of what y'all got to worry about. You know, Sony's known for pulling a fast one, too. And Nintendo don't got their nose clean either. But I'll tell you what, I don't have nearly as much of a hassle with Sony and Nintendo. So that's why I, that's why I stick. And as far as PC gaming, uh, you know, yeah, I, I'm getting my M1 chip soon. So I'll see y'all in there. You know what I'm saying? Nintendo has it right. I believe it's like. Twenty dollars for an entire year of their online yeah. service, and it, yeah. mine just auto renewed recently. And I looked at it, and I wanted to get mad, but I was like, "Ah, shit! It's twenty bucks. I'll I'll get that out of it, you know, just through Tetris. Right? Uh, you know, just through t Tetris ninety nine. <laughs> I'll probably make that up in, in a couple months. So they they so far got the main one. I have a PS five, and I'm still on the free trial. I don't think I'm going to bring myself to get their online one because I got that more of like a single player thing. And then the Xbox, I'm with Web. I already got the ultimate. Uh, that's basically what they're trying to do. It's their way of bullying you and to go like, oh, man, it's only an extra three or four dollars to move up and have all access to, you know, a billion games, which is still the best deal in video gaming. But you're, really is. you're really just jamming the middle finger right into the face of, you know, the middle to lower income not so serious gamer who wants to 
get online and play Call of Duty Warzone with his friends. Like that's the guy who's getting the big middle finger, and that's a lot of people. I think that's, that's not a lot of people. Yeah, I don't know if that's a small number. I think it's a lot of people. So we'll see where this goes. We'll see. Maybe they pull it back a little bit because this the outrage has been pretty. There's other podcasts out there. I know our friends at Gamertag Radio who are a Xbox podcast, very Xbox leaning. Uh, you know, almost to a fault. And they today put out a tweet that was like, emergency podcast, we need to talk about this. And they're pissed off. So when you got those guys, your Xbox hardcore loyal fan base people pissed off, you've done something wrong. These these are the yeah. people who are saying who are still saying Cyberpunk is game of the year last year. Like these, <laughs> you know, so there's some issues. They're they're on you're on their shit list. So fix fix your shit, Microsoft, as Snoop Dogg would say. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Uh, the next news I got here is Fortnite. They are planning on giving away $20 million in prize pools after an abysmal, uh, 2020 where they had very little prize pools. Uh, there was pro players retiring because there's just not enough money in it. However, now they are doubling down, throwing down 20 mil for their esports program. This is up from 17 million that was given away in 2020 in very small doses. They're, uh, Going to be a significant bump in funds for the FNCS, which is one of the more reoccurring common ones. And uh, this is going to, they're going to be standardizing their competition. Uh, so that's good. That's good news that they're turning that around. But the news that's really big is the fact that they are just non stop in these crossovers, man. They've got Predator in the damn game, they're bringing Terminator into the goddamn game. Where does it stop? They now have the most large, comprehensive, like multiverse or collaboration thing of any property ever. And it just happened under our noses over the past what? This game's only been out for two or three, four years, maybe. Uh, it feels this, so much longer. Yeah. And, yeah right. and you know what? At the rate they're doing this, King Kong's about to be in there. Godzilla's going to be in there. Like, they're, they're just... 2025, we're going to be in it. We're yeah, going right? to be in it. Yeah. They're... <laughs> Get Bill from accounting, now a playable <laughs> character in Fortnite. Video game bang shows up to the fight. Like, it, it's just a joke now. It's kind of losing its luster. What do you guys think about this? Why, why do these Fortnite kids get all this amazing stuff and we don't get shit? Uh, they got the views, man. They got yeah. they got the views on Twitch. They got the the support. I mean, my six year old nephew is talking about Fortnite. I mean, he doesn't even play it, but he watches YouTubers. He watches streamers. He, he it's Fortnite. He named a character in Minecraft Fortnite. Like, even, <laughs> this is, this is Fortnite's house. I'm like Fortnite's house. He's like, yeah, this is this is this is somebody on Minecraft. It's his house. This is in and Fortnite. It, yeah, and I, I'm just like I I I don't get it. it, it the the properties that they get. I mean, I saw the Predator announcement on Twitter, and I was like, I, I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet with Predator, to be honest. But I was like, man, where are they going to do next? Not going to lie. It's pretty badass. Like, there's a part on the map where Predator is, like, cloaked and, like, will hunt you and stuff. And if you kill him, you get this special cloak, and you can take it on that. The, the things they do are cool. Like, if it, I, it is cool. They do it right. If I was nine, I'd be all about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those, like... It's like the the popular thing now. Like I remember at one point in time, if you had a yo yo, like one of the fast two hundred one yo yos in like fourth grade, <laughs> you were the hot shit, and everyone, including me, went and bought a freaking yo yo, used it for a day, and then just sat it on a shelf. <laughs> like kids love being like they're such weirdly social creature that they have to be part of whatever the thing that is deemed as cool is and it has been for the last like four years Fortnite. and so like even the kids who don't play Fortnite, they'll talk about for you know they'll, they'll listen to their classmates talk about Fortnite, or they'll watch videos on Fortnite. Yeah. and i think they're at the point like that episode of spongebob where they just have in like they just keep getting more and more money they have pretty patties the game where they just keep <laughs> getting money and getting money they're like we don't know what to do with all this money so we're eventually we're just going to start giving it away and like that's kind of what they're doing both with yeah. the, with the Fortnite championship thing uh, as well as just like okay here's here's you know 3 million dollars to uh, Marvel here's 3 more million dollars to to Star Wars or some million dollars to Fox for Predator or going to get terms just paying out money cuz they just have 
more money than they know what to do with, really. So, Kyle, clarifying question. Are you saying that Fortnite is the yo-yo of our time? <laughs> I I think it's kind of, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Like, I think I, genera- genera- generationally, it's a bit hard to say, but, like, I think it's such a... I feel like it's more widespread obviously than like the yo-yo was like pretty cool but I th- I, i'm talking about like the the third or s- fourth coming of the yo-yo popularity like i was not around for the first yeah. yo-yo craze but like <laughs> it is i was <laughs> and i remember it was all about butterfly yo-yos oh if you had the ball bearings in them if you were had a butterfly yo-yo and then and then a step higher than that if you had a butterfly with an led light or with the lights in it oh mm. shit okay you, were, you got all the girls you were the homie i don't know about all the girls <laughs> but, you know <laughs> my school if this is marketing actually <laughs> I, I my thought is that predator i i think most kids don't know what the predator is maybe they've seen it they're too scared to watch it they, you know they they don't know what it is. it's a boomer thing it's our thing it came from the eighties, you know, and then we kind of, yeah. it's been kicking around in various levels of popularity. But now when you predator or whoever owns the property goes to Fortnite, and obviously they've got some good relationships with some people in high places where they can make these things happen. Now, every kid, you don't have an issue. Everybody knows what predator is now, like or all these kids. And then when they do another movie or when they reboot it for the seventh time and you know, a couple years, Oh shit, that's that Fortnite thing. I'll give it a shot. You know, Terminator is <laughs> another thing. Now you got a whole nother generation of people who are really familiar with what the Terminator is. You know, I think that's kind of where they're probably, they're making money hand over fist just in marketing dollars. In my opinion, it's, they're not going to get the predator in their game. The predator is going like, please, please. I need that. Yeah. Cause I I need that. They finally Fortnite's like one of the few games that has broken across, like outside of the gamer realm. Like before that was just Minecraft and they did a very different way about going about it. But like besides that, like those are the only two games like people can think of like who don't play games ever. Like oh yeah, yeah no I, I know about Fortnite. Like everyone knows about that. Like my grandparents probably know about Fortnite. They don't know any other game, but they know Fortnite. And so like if you go to the executive at Fox and you're like, hey, we'd like to to put Predator in Fortnite. They're like, oh I my okay I know that. Like so you have that recognition to where like it's not. Some executives like, I don't know what that is. I'm not going to put money there. I'm not going to do a deal with these people. Like Everyone knows it. And so they have that, like, everyone knows it and everyone knows it's popular. And so if you're a struggling IP that is no longer as, you know, wh- where you used to be, why not get in the eyes of a couple million people just with the, here, yeah, sure, go ahead, use it. It's spanned the music industry with the Travis Scott crossovers. Like, it's really just become... Uh, out of control. Like we, my biggest callback to a game that was a little past my time, a little later, but still Minecraft. Minecraft still has Minecon. You know, there's uh, I got you know cousins and nephews who dress up as you know Minecraft Steve for for Halloween this last year and stuff. So it's still a big thing in the culture. But Fortnite seems to be ten times ten x that. So I don't think it's gonna go away anytime soon and then you gotta think when these kids get older you know five to ten twenty years later it's gonna come back in a retro way so gg everybody fortnite's with us until the day we die uh we're never going to escape this monster that's created called fortnite um unless skip tells us otherwise is 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 fortnite ever gonna go away or, or how do you see the trajectory man you know what as much as I want it to go away and uh, as much as we're all used to it, I really got to give it this credit, man. It's doing a great job of staying relevant, staying alive. Like, you know, like y'all said, pulling in some references and I'm like, ain't nobody remember Danny Glover and Predator <laughs> 2. Come on, man. Are you kidding me? Let alone Arnold that, in the first so one. Much, dude. Me too, man. What's it going to take to get Skip to download Fortnite? They've already done so many crossovers. Is it going to be the the Fortnite Prince crossover, the Fortnite Sacramento Kings crossover? What's it going to take to get you to download this game? Is it on Nintendo yet? It actually is. Oh, it is? Okay, I was going to say, that's that's what it's going to be. It has to be on the Nintendo Switch. I I Actually, I did download it on Switch because my daughter wanted to play. Um, And I wanted to, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this thing another go. 
because I had it on my Mac. I downloaded it on my Mac and never played. And uh, so I downloaded it, but man, that thing sat there. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. But you know, Epic Store got green money. I can be bought. So they'd have to physically send you a check to play it. There's no property (laughs) they could put in the game that would encourage you to. They have to pay you. I mean, they could send me an ominous debit card. You know what I mean? (laughs) Stating stating that there's a, you know, that that, that is a, you know, a a, a skip (laughs) economic stimulus. That could do it. A skipulous package. All right. right. Skipulous. You know what I'm saying? Skipulate. You got to skipulate me. I right. do it, you know. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is Godzilla and the King Kong movie. King Kong versus Godzilla, Kong versus Godzilla. I don't know which one they're calling it, what they're going with, but it's the next big HBO major release. Uh, they've re- released a couple teasers. I'm not gonna lie, got me a little hype. That's two legendary cinema figures going toe to toe with full blown today's graphics. So uh, here's the, they, they've released like the the breakdown of it, and so basically in a time where monsters walk the earth, humanity's fight for the future sets Godzilla and Kong on a collision course that will see the two most powerful forces of nature on the planet in a spectacular battle of the ages. As Monarch embarks on the perilous mission in the uncharted terrain and unearths clues to the Titans' original. And a human conspiracy threatens to wipe the creatures, both good and bad, from the face of the earth forever. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is going to hit the theaters uh, and HBO Max on March 26th, 2021. And there's going to be a actual full flame, full-fledged trailer coming out uh, in just a couple days on January 24th. Skip, I'm going to start with you on this one because we've talked about HBO cinema releases and the movie industry suffering, uh, you know, as a cause to it. How did you think the Wonder Woman release went? Was this, uh, and, and then how do you think that dictates what's going to happen here with Kong versus Godzilla? Yeah, you know, I listened back to the last episode a little bit, and uh, I heard y'all, I heard y'all throwing some shade at my girl Patty Jenkins and at my other girl Gal Gadot. Oh, so you're and, and, you're a supporter. You support it. Like, you like bro, the movie. I can't believe how y'all was talking about Pedro Pascal, man. Hey, no, no, no. He, he did. He you, was, call, you call yourself a Mandalorian appreciator, and you're throwing shade at my man's. Hey, bruh, life could be bad. Life could be good. That's the <laughs> only. That's you know the saying? only good part you know of that movie. Saying? When Come me on, and my, bruh. when I was talking to Elizabeth, I was like, you know, the best part that came out of that movie is life is good. But it could be bad. <laughs> that was hey, that was money. He on. was he was silky smooth. I don't think the acting was bad. I have nothing against the acting or the directing. I think it fell apart on the writing and where this whole thing forced elements into the sh- movie ruined it. Like, why did they shoehorn that love interest back into it? Like, that did not need to happen. This movie could have been so great. And someone else brought up a good point, and I want to hear your thought to this, but. You know, besides the, the again, somewhat forced elements of like, oh, I'm going to make the thing invisible. And, oh, here's, you know, the elements from the old TV show. Oh, I can fly now. Whatever. I could see you adding those in there. But as far as the plot and everything else goes, you could have put any superhero into that storyline. It didn't it didn't feel like a Wonder Woman story. <laughs> Bruh, What? <laughs> What? Talk See, to me. Talk to me. Hey, just this, to this, save this, this movie. Hey, this is what I. This is why I never wanted Mister. You don't like my movies? Go touch a boob to ever do anything <laughs> in the DC universe, because he got everybody thinking that if it's not dark or brooding or something like that, then then it's not Wonder Woman, bro. Diana Prince. Let's be very clear here. This and, and, and hey, if y'all want to have a conversation of was this a Wonder Woman movie? I'll say this. I believe it was. Very much. It, there's many a storylines that focuses more on that side of things. It was a Diana Prince movie. And I think after finding out who Wonder Woman is and who has to live in this world, Wonder Woman is trying to conceal her identity. She's she's trying to not be seen. She's trying to stay low key. Diana Prince is the person who has to live her life day to day in this world and try to find her way through it and how to live on without the love of the only person who she ever learned to love. Like in that world, she's from Themyscira, the Amazons. Like it was a whole different world. And when she looked at the world that we lived in, it wasn't a lot of redeeming qualities. It took 
someone like Steve Trevor in order to show her that. And then they had a bond and he risked himself and he passed away. Now we know how, why he came back and whatnot. And this movie was all about truth, the power of truth and how it, when you live behind a lie, next to lies, what it can do to us and, and and the damage that it could and then the power of the truth and what the power of the truth can do and choosing the truth even when it's going to take away something very dear from you but for me personally like what i like about it is it was so different from the rest of the dceu movies this and i will say this and i know this might make people like what this was like the disney princess equivalent to what uh, a, a superhero movie would be I loved how magical and mythical and mystical it was. I loved, like I like me being a Wonder Woman fan, I loved how we got the invisible jet. Like that was fly to me. I love how she was like her, her like as she grew as a character and as a person in this world, Diana Prince, her lasso grew with her and it and, and she had ad additional abilities. We gotta remember that was the first time she was using the lasso when we saw her last time. So, of course, the lasso is not going to stay the same. Just like Bruce Wayne beefs up his Batmobiles and gets new gadgets and his gadgets grow with him, her her tools grow with her. The only thing that I missed that I wish they would have had more of, and I understand why they didn't, really was the sword. But she's trying to learn to live more. Like, she she lost the love of her life due to that violence. So she's trying to be super nonviolent as much as she can. And she really stayed that way uh, as much as possible until the very end. But I really appre I appreciated the femininity within the movie, not to be overstated and whatnot, but like I really appreciated that. I, I appreciated that Patty Jenkins really had her hand on this. I always appreciate what Gal Gadot brings to it. I had a few. Don't get me wrong. It's not a perfect film. I had some issues with the movie. Um, some of the dialogue and whatnot went on too long. Some of the monologues especially were a little too on the nose for me. I feel that I rolled my eyes a few times. But I have to be honest with you, what my body and my mind and my heart was doing when I watched the movie, it was fluttering. It was tearing up. It was welling up. It was being wondered and wowed. All those moments got me. And I enjoyed the moments in that movie in a Disney-like magical way more than I enjoyed the moments in The Lion King and uh, Jungle Book and majority of those are in Mulan and all those other remixes. It's crazy to me how much, how magical, how much magic they were able to capture in this movie. And I really appreciated it. Okay. I mean, I still think it sucked, but I'm glad... <laughs> I'm glad that you appreciated it. There are like I I know last week we came off super negative. There were positive things like that. I nothing bad against the the acting, you know, and the, and the directing and those types of of things. But man, there was just some. They made to me Gal Gadot and, and the Wonder Woman character just was so unlikable. Like she knew how attractive she was, and it felt like. It was like, oh, they overplayed like, oh, she's the attractive woman who gets treated different by I, everybody and everything. I want to jump in on that. And here's a big reason why, because I heard a lot of people say that. And I was like, I'm really going to look out for that in this, uh, like the second time around. And that is really not nearly as present as everybody makes up and thinks it is. It was more so on the side of Cheetah. And there's a very specific character reason for that, because she was someone who wasn't being liked and wanted people's attention and wanted people's validation more than leaning into her own self and finding her own worth. But if you go back and watch, there's actually a lot of times when men was interacting with her where actually she was smiling to them and being very gracious, Gal Gadot. So I would give it another watch. And I think you'll see that that is not nearly as present as people made it out to be. The biggest moment when it was there was actually when it was Steve. And and she had to tell him to go away multiple times. And obviously we see, we turn around to see like, she found out who it really was. The only other and the only other time was when the dude had snagged the cab before uh, she did. And he was just like, hey, you want to take the cab together? And she was just like, "Nah, I'll wait for the next one. See, that was it. But I didn't would, even... would you get in a cab with someone that you never that you don't know, man, or woman, man or female, I, unless you're drunk? Chances are, no, I know I'm not. I, I didn't even know other people had made that assertion because this is a movie where I did not go to look what other people were saying. Like, this was all just conversations, me and my wife watching it, who ha who caught the same vibes as me. So I feel a little validated that other people were making a big deal out of it. I, st I still thought she came off as not likable uh, as the hero. Like I did not like her. I loved her in the first one. And, and I loved her in the first segment where she was racing you know I, I i was so on board with the movie and maybe that made it even more jarring because i love the first one and then i even loved the first 20 minutes of this one and then as soon as they went to the 80s and in the mall it's just it just fell off 
and and, and it fell off hard with I had you, you're not a you're not a fan of a of a Richard Donner Superman are you Christopher Reeves I I I've watched the first one and I thought it was okay like but, but I never seeked out more It makes sense Sorry Skip I don't I hate disappointing no, no, you I, more than anything I, No 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 don't trust me you're not disappointing me like like you said I didn't change your mind and when I say my side I'm like unless it's like life or death something crazy I'm trying to talk someone I, I never I'm never really trying to change anyone's mind I'm just trying to say my side so hey you feel how you feel I don't want you to change how you feel and like now some of the things that you might have seen second time around I would say watch again and maybe watch a little more closely if you give it a second ch- chance but other than that like no nah, man it's I'm I'm told trust me I am so fine the only part about most people not connecting with it that hits me is that I want Patty and I want Gal to be successful. But I mean, as far as a movie, like everybody just liking what they like, like I'm cool if people didn't like it. I'm, I'm going again to see it tonight. <laughs> I got to drive it. <laughs> like I love that movie, man. And it's ah. clearly successful mm-hmm. because they've already greenlit the Wonder Woman three. So like that, that's hmm. not an issue. It's going to exist. And, and I'll be honest, I'll probably watch it. You know, because the first one was still that good. And I just of all the DC fran- properties that are out there right now. I still say that's the best one. And I yeah. will, I, will, I was going to say like how low must their bar for success be now at this point in time? They're like, all right, well we didn't lose money on it. Let's go ahead and do another one. We like, broke even. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I don't know. I'm a, it, it, it's hard to follow uh, Skip's passionate feelings towards it. I like the movie, but <laughs> I watch DC movies very different than I watch Marvel movies. I, I, I feel like I'm more invested in Marvel movies and I'll watch it and I'll I'll be more critical and I'll look for Easter eggs and I'll look for, for, for things in it. When I watch a DC movie, I just watch a DC movie because I want to watch a movie. So I was less critical. There were you know, there were things like, you know, the turning of the jet invisible. I was like, Oh, it's pretty cool, but I was kind of like, Oh now she could turn things invisible. Kinda of like and I forget which which one of the the new Star Wars when all of a sudden Leia has powers as force powers and she survives space. You know, same kind of thing. Like, well, when did that? When was that a thing? But regardless, like I was like, oh, that's cool. She has an invisible jet. Yeah, and I was like explaining to Marissa. Oh, in the comic, she has an invisible jet. So that's kind of like what they're referencing and stuff like that. I thought it was a, I thought it was a decent movie. I thought it was okay. I didn't get the vibe that that you're talking about, Corey, of her kind of being i don't know lack of a better word full of herself or, no, or, just, or knowing uh, yeah yeah i just I, I didn't get it but again i'm not watching it like being like critiquing it i'm just watching it one last news story we'll get to because uh man this was a, a very good show man this is full we we went through uh I get to cut some of the shitty filler stories because sometimes I throw in shitty filler stories, a little a bit of how the soup is made, uh, you know, and we're not going to have to do any of those this week. So we're, we're, I want to do one more big one, though. Uh, and it has to do with kind of just a trend in the video game market altogether, which we got to see again, you know, uh, with the game Rust, because Rust is a game that's been out since 2013. It had its moments. It had a very toxic community, not a great reputation. And then all of a sudden, a couple months ago, this is the game. Everybody wants to play it. I'm getting Slack, company Slack messages saying, let's do a Rust server. You know, it was it was big time. And then it's gone. It's already gone. By the time I buy and install the game, everyone's done playing it. Why is this happening? And we're getting to see more and more of this trend. We saw it a couple times last year with Among Us. The rise and fall, so to speak, because it's still there, but nowhere near what it was. We saw it with the uh, other game whose name I can't even remember right now. What was the one before Among Us, the little party game? Fall Guys? Fall Guys, thank you. Fall Guys, yeah. This is happening you- so much. Why is this going on? It's it's weird. Like I was going to say, I think I said this last time, or maybe in a conversation with my wife, Like there needs to be a sociologist out here studying the way that the trendsetters in the gaming community work and and like what or like how it naturally goes they group up together and it's like it's fascinating because it's all of the top streamers 
and it's weird because they all like hang together like all the you know the the cheerleaders and the football kids all play you know all, all hang out together and they all drive their nice cars because their parents are rich and like they all kind of have this like they all go together and they're the it people and then there's the not it people that want to be the it people and it's weird because you're seeing that in games which is traditionally not as like it's n there's not ever like massively popular people in games until the last like 10 15 years and so it's fascinating to see that like in, in such an overwhelming number too these there's you know the top like 100 streamers on twitch basically all of them play together in this giant friend group and they just drone to games like together and it essentially like not out of their own decision to like, okay, I, I want everyone in the world to play this game, but like, it just naturally follows them that everyone will also now play this game because they're seeing the people that they enjoy content from playing this game. That's why among us took off um, because there were so many big names playing it. You had, you know, members of Congress go in and play the game and like it, it there, it, that was why it like blew up and it was a game made by like four people same with fall guys before that and rust now it's like not rust is not an incredible game it's kind of been the same thing for like six years not evolved much not changed much besides them taking out zombies like but because you have so many people like decide that this is the game i want to play everyone wants to follow them because they're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that game. What's that like? And they also have this um, almost a, I guess the, the interesting thing is it used to be like a utopia, right? Like it, it seemed like they have this great server where no one is, you know, terrible to each other. Like you don't have people dropping the N word on you at team speak all the damn time. Um, but like, it, it seemed like a better version of what the game could be. And then you have a bunch of people go re-download it and play and like, Oh no, it's, it's yeah, it's still pretty bad. <laughs> it's still toxic. It's still whatever. And even the, the utopian server also has issues too, because it's the same. Like you have still people doing trolley things, even among the top level of the streamer community, you still have people doing not cool things. And they also just had been playing the game. 12 hours a day for the last three weeks you, you kind of get bored of shit that way <laughs> it's funny how things change because this came at the very end of last year early into this year and as of like january 8th there was articles and this game had peaked on twitch with like over 1.3 million people watching this game and then steam had record numbers of people actually playing the game you know and then just as recent as two days ago, a new article comes out of like the guy who runs that server that you're talking about saying, yeah, everyone's gone. Uh, you know what happened was XQC came on and he played the game for three hours and two, 300 hours in two weeks, got burnt out and moved on to something else. And now, you know, they're on to that. And I guess it's cool. Like maybe Rust picks up a payday, you know, for, for the ne last couple couple weeks maybe get some sticky fans and people stay around but is it just a matter of time before they start organizing and putting this together or has that already happened like are, are there is there already a dark shadow council of these streamers who are like all right this week it's apex legends we're gonna make that we're gonna blow that one out we're gonna charge them a shitload of money and and we're just gonna build that game or is it truly just random and we're in this weird high school i like how you compared it to high school like you know gamers are famously kind of proud of being the outcasts who now we're adults and we have this own ecosystem where gamers we were we were all such losers everyone made fun of us for playing video games now we're the kings and now we've evolved into exactly what they all claim they hate it. Become exactly what we fought to destroy yeah <laughs> don't you realize that <laughs> In fighting, where got you. we've become right yeah, they've become us. So, I I don't know. I think it's uh, kind of scary, but also kind of cool. <laughs> like I, we we talked about it during the Apex Legends because I think that's what built Apex. They had a million dollar budget, and instead of putting it to Super Bowl ads, they gave it to Ninja, and look what happened. Yeah. Like you know, the game built kind of a name and a reputation off of that. 
Um, it's it's interesting. Skip, what's your take on this new influencer, this new Twitch streamer that's kind of dictating what games everybody's playing? Oh, he's muted. You're muted, I think. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry about that, y'all. 2021! We're back! 2021. Yeah. Um, I mean, to me, it's a natural progression of things. It, anything that you have, you know, that, that becomes popular or... You know, and I mean that on a small scale is eventually going to get their gatekeepers. And, um, you know, that's kind of what we what we get. And there's a small difference between the gatekeepers and the tastemakers. Mm. Uh, and in this particular case, they probably they probably think that they are being tastemakers. And there's probably some that are honest with themselves, knowing that they're being gatekeepers and just not saying it. But ultimately, that that's what their actions kind of lead to. They're kind of gatekeeping in a way. Um I mean, that's the closest term I could think of to it. And it's just, it's not, it's not natural. And it's, it's, it's understood why, you know, obviously they can dictate the tempo of kind of where things are going and stay within the spaces that they feel the most comfortable in, that they feel like they can be the most successful in. Um, but it's, it's not organic. It's not natural. And I don't think there's anything positive about it for, uh, for, for the, for the gaming community as a whole anyway. Um, but I'll say that, and actually, I got to take off, so that'll be my parting, uh, my parting statement. Oh, you for got everybody. a movie to you got a movie to catch. Well, we we yeah, did we game. did go over, so we didn't. Oh, we're not gonna get to do the Curtis comic book corner. Hey, we will. It's gonna be on the next episode. Another episode. It's gonna be on the next one. And okay. It's gonna be even better. There's okay. gonna be more to talk about. But thank you, VGB. Always a pleasure being here. Web Slinger is back in the building hey. birthday bros you know how we do it whip 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 you know what i'm saying kyle the winner keep winning mr vincent keep corying <laughs> i'll see y'all next time later skip later, skip. later. i was gonna say on that note like i feel like the one weird thing is i feel like now there's going to be so many uh studio executives and marketing people who are going to try their absolute hardest to try to do um artificially what has happened naturally with among us fall guys and mm -hmm. uh rust and they're going to like i mean they've tried to do it in the past with like launch events where you're like okay i'm going to pay i think call of duty ended up doing it for stuff like i'm gonna pay every streamer to co-play my game right now and it kind of works okay like they get them on the first day and like it's a kind of a cool thing but it never like lasts beyond that because how much money would you need to pay the top 100 Twitch streamers to play your game for four, like three or four weeks? That is <laughs> well, th that is more money than it takes to make the game almost. Like that is ridiculous. That's what I mean. Corey mentioned Apex. I think Apex was like the catalyst in this thought process because, like, yeah, Call of Duty did it before, but that wasn't what they spent their marketing dollars on. They spent right. their, a portion of their marketing dollars on that, and then they also had you know in-store displays they had posters they had commercials they had all this stuff whereas apex did none of that apex paid took all of their marketing budget and they put it towards streamers and said you guys mm -hmm. played this game i mean on top of that you have to have a good game like you have to have a game that these streamers are going to want to play aside from the fact that they're just getting paid because that's how they stick around when you're done paying them but i think that that's where a lot of these you know the fall guys and the among us i wouldn't be surprised if it's like kind of a combination between it's like the popular kids that are just everybody's doing what the popular kids want to do but it's also they're the popular kids because they have the higher amount of streamers or the of, of viewers and companies are going to them saying hey we'll pay you x amount to play this game for x amount of time and they're getting that and that's where you know fall guys took off and that's where among us took off and stuff like that i think it's a little bit of a popular and then a little bit of the conspiracy theory on top of it because it's it's crazy what you could do and companies are realizing that commercials are only going to get you so much posters aren't only going to get you so much where the money is and where the viewership is is streamers and i think that's the future of what we're going to be seeing with games i, think I guess we've that's seen why it fail. makeup uh, yeah we've seen it fail totally. uh, it, with hyperscape True. the ubisoft one Oh yeah, they definitely threw some big budget at some paid streamers, and you know the game just wasn't there, and the view—that's the thing—the viewership didn't retain because 
you know, you get that first day of hype where you've paid the big boys to play, and then you got everyone trying to keep up with the big boys, like Kyle had mentioned. And then once XQC's money runs up and he starts playing Rust, that's where they're going to go back to because it's more fun to watch, and he's having more fun playing it, you know? So th there is a balance. It's not like they can just control and make anything. I mean, with enough money, I bet they could. They could have probably turned Crucible. One that I don't know how <laughs> that failed. That Amazon game, who owns Twitch, like you would have thought they would have been able to make something happen. But that game fizzled really quick. So yeah. I don't know. It's just an interesting point, point of cop, uh, topic. I'm glad we uh, were able to discuss it here. But that is, of course, the video game bang outro music, which means the podcast gods have decided it's time to end the show. So before we do... Let's kick it on over to Kyle, the winner, and say, what are you plugging, man? I don't, I don't really have anything to plug. I can't announce what I'm working on, <laughs> which is fun. Like, I, I'm in that world right now, so I can't say what I'm doing besides go support Harmonix Games. Like, buy Fuser. That's the one for sure <laughs> public project that they're really pushing. Yeah. It's a cool game. I've heard good things about it. I need to play it. I'm too busy working. Uh, to play it. Have they sent uh, you well. like a t-shirt yet? Where's my I merch? Get, I, you got enough sway over one. there to get me, to get me some a shirt. Stuff? I own I, I own a rock band shirt, so that's that's you know I I've got the, some of the merch going here, but okay. Um, I'm not really plugging too much right now. I, I uh, between other podcasts right now for a little bit, we're on on some breaks. Um, just follow me on Twitter, at Kyle the Winter, for all the stuff that I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for me. It's, it's been it's been kind of low key this last couple of weeks. I respect it. I respect it. Get back on your grind, man. What about David Webb? Welcome back. Thanks for coming back. It was good Thank to have you. you, man. Thank you. You've, yeah, it's good to be here. Most... It's like riding a bike. Yeah. I mean, you got yeah. the. I mean, next next time you're gonna activate because you got a green screen. I believe it's a web green. around as well. Too. It is a web around. Yeah. yeah. You got the web around green screen. But uh, next time we're gonna get some special effects or what? You know what? I I was talking about before the show. I spent like two hours trying to get the Bernie meme behind me. <laughs> the Bernie like, Sanders sitting down with the, the Bernie Sanders yeah. sitting. I was, I was gonna take a picture of the room I'm in and then like Photoshop him in behind me and then that's gonna be my green screen. But it didn't work out. So, so we'll see. <laughs> I think I can play around with it. You gotta save something. Uh, for, save something for, save for something. next time. You gotta keep him wanting more. Exactly. Uh, for myself, you can follow the San Francisco Shock at SF Shock on Twitter. We got some fun stuff, some big announcements, dare I say, coming up in the future that I don't think anybody is expecting. So that's it. That's all you're going to get from me. I'm not going to give you any more details than that. But if you are a fan of the Overwatch community and Overwatch scene, uh, we're going to melt your face uh, pretty soon here. So stay tuned for that. But that's it, man. I'm just I'm just promoting positive vibes. I'm just glad to kick it with the homies again. And this feels good. I can't wait till we can actually do it again. Um, so that's it. That's the show. No more. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week, right here, same bang time, same bang channel. Later. You've just been banged. Can you tell I'm stalling so I can find my? Partner? I was gonna say, <laughs> did, did it change? <laughs> Oh, and I got to thank you Skip. You've been back. <laughs> Skip and Tosh, man. He had to go. He had to. He had a movie to catch, and we started late and went long. So, uh, uh, you know, appreciate his time as always. But that's it for Skip and Tosh, the real David Webb, Kyle the winner. My name is Corey saying you've just been banged.